Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today, I got a very special episode for you. I have Sharon and Sam on the channel. They both have camper vans. They're married and they travel together. They're gonna give us a quick tour of both of their vans and tell us a little bit about their lifestyle. So join us. We met in February of 2019 near Lake Havasu, Arizona. I had been living in my Born Free Class C for over two and a half years at the time. and. Sharon? I, I lived in a 2004 Rialta, Winnebago. I'd only been eight weeks full-time on the road when we met. I had uh, gotten the Rialta in uh, November of 2017 and taken several trips in 2018. And, and then my plan was to be a snowbird in 2019. And, uh, and a, a mutual friend in the Rialta community introduced Sam and I. Yeah, we, there was a mutual attraction, which we decided to go with. And starting about May of 2019, we started traveling together as traveling neighbors. And we've been doing that ever since. In 2020, we got married. Traveling in separate vehicles worked so well for us because even though we, we followed a bunch of YouTube channels of couples living in a van this size or smaller successfully, and my hat's off to them. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> Uh, together we, we have over 80, 80 years of married experience and so we kind of know what works and what doesn't and we partly because our biological clocks are different I'm an night owl she's early early to bed early to rise we decided that maintaining the two vehicles affords both of us private time and private space and it helps them to ensure domestic tranquility <laughs> and uh, so far it's worked, worked very well for us okay um, so, did you want, uh, should we start with your van? Yeah, would you like to see how we live? So this is the area, the driver's seat, these seats swivel around. And when I get up in the morning, I have all these choices of where I can sit. When my grandchildren, when I park in my kids' driveways and my grandchildren are over, they can come and see, whoops, <laughs> they can come and see, come over to grandma's house and they can sit in here and color and, and uh, have a good time at grandma's house. We eat our dinner in here um, sometimes. And uh, it's got a full refrigerator that we um, keep stocked. George, th this, did, this model didn't come with, with shelves, but George put some shelves in there for me last year. And then this year, George at Humble Road put in a new faucet and new latches on our on the drawers so that they close tight. What was the other one? There's one more. Oh, oh, and a new screen on the back too, the Rolf screen. So my bed folds up and um, when we're traveling longer distances, I leave it down and I store things underneath in the garage. But um, so there is a bathroom here and um, I actually haven't used the shower yet. Um, when we've been traveling in Sam's Born Free, that was a easier shower to use. So we'll see now when we're going to be changing our, uh, how we're doing things. Maybe I will be. This model is the 20, 20 and a half Travado GL. So that means it has lithium batteries and it has solar panels on the roof. Uh, it has a, a Truma heater. It has propane in this one. Uh, so I have a two burner stove. It has AC up there. We did change out the, our uh, fan last year too, so that we, um, where it's the kind that will blow in or out. What's that called? Anyway, um, so that, that works really well too. The, the spaciousness of the, having the dining area and then the, just being, it, it's, it just feels very spacious. Um, it, it really works. The Truma is easy to operate and you just, um, you can turn the heat up and, and uh, it, it works very efficient. Um, this year, George uh, uh, took out, we had a Jensen uh, music system in here and we took that out and made a cubby in there because we didn't use it. This is the television, um, which I don't use either, but it, it's still, it's available. There's just plenty of storage. There's lots of storage up here. And when the sliding door closes, this is another seat back. And so we actually have seating for five. 
and the table also goes around too. So this, so the awning goes out. And then I'll show you the back. So this is the new roll-up screen we put on there. George is humble wrote to put it on there for us. Um, and this is the back closet, which I stuffed with uh, things that we don't use that often. So there, it's totally packed with a travel backpack and some extra chairs. And we have these covers that are um, insulated. And um, basically I leave that one on all the time because you don't, it doesn't need to be taken off. And having a space to hang coats in came in handy. So we found when this door is closed, it's hard to get to reach this handle. So Sam put this bungee on, yeah. so from the inside we can pull it and get the door open. Okay. So. All right, uh, so yes, now we can start looking at my van. Now, hopefully you've all seen the video Patrick did with George of Humble Road, the, the detailed tour of the van. But this, just to give you a quick glimpse. Now, at the time of this filming, I've only had the van four or five days, so, so I'm not totally moved in yet. It's still a work in progress, but it's the same, exactly the same size van as Sharon's Winnebago, which is the uh, Ram Pro Master 3500 extended. So it's 20 feet, 10 inches long, but the layout is, is totally different in that um, I have, you know, a longer galley uh, counter, which runs uh, partway through the doorway. I have a full size bed, which is articulates. In other words, I can, it, it will, the feet and the head will both, will all uh, raise and lower. Microwave, refrigerator, freezer, have galley, galley drawers here and cabinets. And the, the, uh, as George says, armoire, drawers here and cabinets here. I'm pretty tall, but even I have trouble getting into with the height of this bed. So George put this step, which uh, swings out and locks, and this is a nice heavy duty drawer slide. Makes it very easy for me to get up into the bed and exit. And he even provided a little night light, a little red red light there at night, so it's easy to see the step in the middle of the night. Um, I have a pantry right here, which is very nice. A little storage cubby here goes back. Down here is the vent for the Bosto heater, which is wonderful. And there's no propane in this vehicle. Uh, it's just it's uh, either electric or uh, the well, Bosto taps off of the gas fuel tank. So for cooking, I have an induction cooktop. It sits right here, plugs in right here. George, uh, we, we put in a very uh, large battery system, over 600 amp hours of, of um lithium batteries, a 30, uh, 3000 watt inverter, you know, 600 watts of solar on the roof, and a second alternator to, to charge while I'm driving. So power hasn't been a problem and don't anticipate it becoming one. I'm, I'm 6'2", and so and the ProMaster has limited, you know, is, is uh, fairly tall, and George really worked hard to make, make it usable for me and he did, I think, a wonderful job. Even here, you know, if I, now if I, if I stand ramrod straight, I'm going to hit this refrigerator. But I no, don't normally do that as I walk around. So I, I, I might sometimes brush my head up against it, but it's not that big a deal. All right. So then in the, in the both of the ProMaster seats swivel around. So, so this kind of becomes a lounge area. And I have a... This lagoon table mount. So I have a table here, and we have another another mount and another table uh, for Sharon when when she's when we're dining in, in my rig instead of hers, or working on the computer, whatever. Then the then I have there's a sea head 
dry toilet, composting toilet, however you want to term it, which is uh, which works works well for my needs. And to then there is a shower here. All I have to do. Oops, I'm sorry. I have to do this first. Lift this up. Move the toilet out of the way. Take this mirror off. And here's my shower. Shower curtain stored back here. Goes all the way around. I have to move this, usually take the table off. But, and here's my shower. I have two Max Air fans, one in the front, one in the rear. So I can have one sucking up, the other one blowing down to get good circulation in the van. I have the Coleman uh, Mach, what, non-ducted quad, NDQ, uh, air conditioner which will run off of, the, off of the battery bank, off of the inverter. And then we have, there's cab over storage area here, which I haven't quite figured out what I'm gonna store there yet. I have roll-off screens on both the, the side and the rear. George found a nice large sink with the uh, Akiva ultraviolet um, water purifier. It's not turned on, there we go. There, and a Delta faucet that has a nice little on-off feature there. Thanks to Tom Morton of Morton's on the Move for, for cluing us into to the availability of this, this wonderful faucet. Because this is great. As full-timers, you learn to, to be very stingy with water. You only have a limited supply. So having this, this faucet able to, when you're washing your hands, stuff like that, being able to, to you know, wet your hands, turn it off while you're soaping, and then touch it again, to rinse off really helps. Why don't we go around back or look or the outside? It's not a whole lot there in that here, here's the outdoor shower, extra little AC outlet here. These are the mounts for the Fiamma awning. So I can very convenient to roll it in and out. Store it away. Back, then the rear garage. I have 45 gallons of water between the wheel wells, along with the 630 amp lithium battery, the inverter, battery monitor. This is the back of the microwave. Over here is the the water hot water tank with the glycol system going through, water pump. And the rest is storage in here, which I'm still sorting out. Um, a Fiamma, I mean, sorry, a Roloff awning for the rear as well as the side, Gives, uh, which I, don't, I haven't seen a better way of uh, having to sc screening in your, your, your RV. All we have on this other side is the shore power, which is a smart plug rather than the, the old twist type. This, uh, from what I understand, it gives a lot better connectivity, and so it works very, very well. And let's see, then down here, here's the gray tank. There's no black tank, but here's the gray tank uh, drain and the exhaust for the Wobasto heater. And another small running board to get into the cab. Thank you for giving us the tour of both your yeah. camper vans. What was it like going from a home into an RV for the first time? Was there that disconnect of like the hominess inside? Because I noticed, Sharon, yours looks like a house. I saw a lamp on the table. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, George had had, had told me that adding a lamp can really make a, a difference and it really has. And then just having little touches of when I'm sitting there, things that I like to look at and, and color is really important. And um, just, it just feels like a home. And what about for you, Sam? I, I know you had a big RV, a Born Free. We had you on the channel before. Yeah. yeah. And you were talking about them at Georgia Humble Road building you this van. Yeah. What is that transition like going from a big RV to a small RV? Well, I'm still in the process. So. <laughs> so. I can't uh, say a whole lot other than it's 
about what I expected. I'm, I'm going from a 2,000 square foot house to 132 square foot Class C was a huge step. Going from 132 square feet Class C to about 80, 85 square feet in a van isn't as big a leap, but it's still presenting challenges, which I'm, I'm still in process of. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the Born Free, you had to do a lot of modifications to make it work for you. The yep. difference with this, it was built for you. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's why I wanted George uh, to build my van and to incorporate more, uh, well, more precisely the, the, the elements that I value in living full time in, in a vehicle. In the Born Free, I, I did have major interior modifications and systems modifications to the electrical system and, uh, and the interior to make it um, as comfortable as I could for living off grid. And it worked very well, but uh, the vehicle was, uh, actually it's only five feet uh, longer, but it was taller and wider than this one. And so it wasn't as amenable to just uh, using as, as a daily vehicle. And so I, I towed a car with it. And um, so I, the, I wanted to go to, to a van to become more nimble, so where I can just use the, my home as a daily driver to go to the grocery store, out to eat, sightseeing, whatever. And uh, so that was a good part of the, the reasoning for, for pursuing this. And with George uh, able to figure out the, the best elements, electrically, water, uh, solar, um, heating, air conditioning, venting, all of that was taken into consideration in the design of the vehicle. And and now it's it's mine, <laughs> my new home. And what about, you had a Winnebago Rialta, and just in case the viewers don't know, that was, uh, Winnebago made them for quite a time. It was a Volkswagen, Chassis. van front chassis with a motorhome conversion mm -hmm. done to it. It was a little bit bigger than the Travato that you have now. And the Rialto was made from, I think it was 95 to 2005. Mine was a 2004. And uh, it was about a foot longer than the Promaster. Um, and a little bit wider too. Um, and it, it was a beautiful vehicle. Um, but we started having some mechanical issues with it in uh, started in December of 2019 and then another major issue in May and um, decided that it, for full-time living we just needed to do something else and he'd already done the research on the Travato and knew about the um, Volta system and and all those things so we when we went to the dealer they had two left and you know, we snapped and, one up yeah yeah <laughs> And that was in May of 2020. The Rialtas have somewhat of a cult following to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But so a lot of people use them just for vacations. You're living in it full time. So your expectation level is much higher than mm -hmm. someone using on vacation. So, mm -hmm. you know, mechanical problems could really get you stuck in somewhere for quite some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are limited places, I guess, you could work on those. It's not like every shop will work right. on Right. You had to have someone that specialized in Volkswagen and that was... Um, could do it. Well, that's where the Rialto user community really, really Yeah, the you. community really, uh, really helped. Thanks to, to Brad, uh, <laughs> uh, he, he was the, I could call him and he could search for where I could go and, and it was really helpful. And also uh, when I sold it, he, he listed it on the site and um, you know, found the buyer front for it. We do a lot of, of uh, dry camping um, as we're going, you know, if we're really moving state to state, trying, trying to get to a destination, a lot of, of Walmart parking or, or Cracker Barrel, things like that and, overnight. And driveways of family and friends. Yeah, family and friends. Uh, in campgrounds, we leave it up to the, the rules and regulations of that RV park or, or public campground as to whether we can share a site or we have, we have to get two, two separate sites. Mm -hmm. Depends on the rules. And we've you know, we found it both ways. Mm -hmm. But often they'll let us share a site because we don't need the, the full hookups, you know, or, or the electrical. So we mm -hmm. really don't, we basically just need a, a legal place to park. It's nice mm -hmm. to every four or five days be able to dump, dump your gray water, refill your, your fresh water, 
stuff like that. Maybe plug in to make sure your batteries are topped off. All that really isn't an issue now with the with the two systems we have. Yeah, with the lithium systems that both of these vans mm -hmm. have, you're pretty yeah. capable. And the, and the second alternators that both of them have. So yeah. driving pretty much gets them full within an hour or two of driving. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's uh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so all we really need is a legal place to park. Legal, safe, yep. and quiet, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's that's nice. That's a nice bonus. Uh, <laughs> it, it's not required. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sam and Sharon, thank you very much for taking the time to meet me here today to give us a tour of both your camper vans as well as share your story. Your story is uh, amazing. I love that you are able to meet each other out on the road, get married, and <laughs> still continue to travel in two separate camper vans. Mm -hmm. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I'd love it. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.